Nicole here. And today we are filming our third video. Can you believe it, babe? Time flies. <laughs> We're actually doing a question and answer, a Q&A for just a lot of questions we've received over the last two, three months. All right, babe, let's get right into it. Woo. All right, our first question is, how did we meet? You wanna take that away? Yeah, so it was pretty <laughs> cool how we met. It was actually through a dating show, but not through both of us being on the dating show. I was working behind the scenes with Temptation Island last year in 2020. Um, they came out here and filmed, and my friend Jeltham got me a job, you know, working with transportation and deliveries, and I didn't meet her on the show, but we connected afterwards. Yeah, tell them about that connection, babe. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of them didn't have their phones while they were here, um, so when they got home and the season aired, I was able to find, you know, people who were actually on the show, and when I saw Nicole on the episode, she was actually already in Maui, right by my house, and... I hit her up to do a photo shoot at the sunflower fields while they're in bloom, so the timing was just perfect. Aww. And yeah, we've just been ever best since. friends ever since. <laughs> oh yeah, I love our story. The sunflower field literally feels like forever ago, and I can't even believe like Ti was on air during that time. It just feels like such a different lifetime ago. <laughs> so question number two is, what are our next big projects together? Do you wanna take this one away, babe? Yeah, so as you guys can see, Darren and Nicole and our YouTube channel has been our top priority, pushing out consistent content and reaching the larger couples audience and YouTube audience to you know further the exposure for our other projects, which second, we have Trash Lab, which is gonna be a viral free mobile app um, it's going to be on all types of mobile devices to be able to play, to help save the ocean and slash trash virtually and to have it directly fund us doing it physically out here in Hawaii, which ends up leading into our next project, which is taking the trash and turning it into resin art. Yes, so resin art has been one of our favorite hobbies that we've picked up together, but what's so special about it is that all the ghost nets and trash that we pick up from all of our cleanups go into these art pieces. So essentially you're buying something that's saving the world, saving our ocean. It's been such an amazing process, you know, launching our Etsy store. The feedback's been awesome. Thank you guys for the support. Just everywhere we post it, people, you know, see the effort that goes into this, the message that it spreads. And you know, the next project is the podcast. Yes. Cool. So our last big project that we have working up, hopefully will come out within the next couple of weeks is um, my podcast. It's going to be called Cola Talks. I'm going to be host. Darren's going to be co-host. And of course, we're going to have some guests, Zoom guests, in-person guests. And we're just going to be talking about some heavy stuff, honestly. Things that Darren and I talk about on a daily basis that I'm always like, why aren't we filming this? So question number three is, how did you both get into reality TV? I barely dabbled in it, but I think Nicole could take that one away. <laughs> okay, so you guys, I feel like a broken record with what I say. However, all of you guys know, Backstage.com has saved my life. Through that, I got all my extra work. I've been on HBO, I've been on Showtime. I got my first reality TV show. Yeah, how I got into it was a little different. I just, you know, had a friend hit me up asking if I was free for the summer and if I wanted to help out with the production. I didn't even know what production it was till everyone flew in and, you know, Mark Wahlberg and all these people were here. So, you know, it was pretty cool. It was my first time and Fortunately, I don't think I'll be doing it again, um, you know, because yeah. of all these new requirements. But yeah, you know, that's different conversation. <laughs> life is life, man. <laughs> so our first... So our... <laughs> <laughs> so our fourth question is, how did Kongan water change your life? And of course, my baby's going to take that away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's changed my life, I would say, physically, financially, and mentally. Um, you know, where I was when I first got introduced in 2015. Um, I was an online marketer, and I hadn't found a company that was, you know, reputable and long-term. And Enagic was 40-plus years old at the time. Um, I got the water because I heard about it through Tony Robbins students raving about it and saw that he had one and now McGregor has one and you now I've just loved drinking the water. My parents have seen amazing benefits. Hundreds of my friends around the world. It's been a true blessing um, and it's definitely kept me in my best shape and the healthiest I've ever been. So I'm super grateful and yeah, how has it changed your life, Nicole? Well, I feel like I was introduced to it a year ago and it's crazy because I was introduced to it on Temptation Island because the PAs that I worked with, every time we were hungover, we were 
always dying for something to obviously like help us get back into you know being ourselves and you know we had this one PA that would always bring us just a little you know sip of water we would take it and we'd feel so much better it was like medicine or an IV I didn't really learn learn about it until I met Darren and then you know when I started living with him and started drinking it daily my nails started getting longer my hair started getting more healthier my skin has been glowing oh um, yeah we shower in it and it's just been it's honestly, I can I can tell you within the last, what, four or five months of really using this at daily, it's changed my life completely. And when people, when I, people are still drinking water bottles and I'm, you know, still seeing it, I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, I was that person once before, you know? And Darren yeah. knows that. Like, I always told him, I'm like, I can't believe, like, my entire life, I didn't know any of the things I know now. And of course, you guys, we're gonna be coming out with an awesome video showing you guys all the demos and everything. And I would say it even introduced me to getting into conservation just because seeing how much single use plastic you use just when buying water bottles, you know, how much goes in the landfill, ends up in the ocean, you know, it was really just that spiritual benefit of sharing with people and helping the ocean was what led us into Trash Slash and the resin art. And, everything else so you know health is wealth and you could also create a lot of wealth you know working with very legit products yeah and don't forget everything's connected so just keep the circle flowing all right our fifth question is why do you believe in cryptocurrency before my baby takes that away because he's gonna have a lot to talk about I'm going to put my comment into it. Banks have become centralized, they've become corrupt, they definitely have become controlling. So when I got introduced into cryptocurrency, it showed me that things can be open, that things can be decentralized. So it showed me a way of a different future and a brighter future with different ways of you know money and how much you can have. So I'm still learning a lot about it, so it's hard for me to talk about it, but I definitely am open to this new way of life. I, I believe in crypto is you know, I've been around it for maybe five, six years. I've seen what is done to a lot of developing countries in terms of bringing financial opportunity, technology. Um, you know, nowadays we're seeing mobile phones being in all these third world countries and crypto gives them access to a decentralized banking system. So, you know, with all of that, along with the support for sustainability, I mean, it's just a lot of the most disruptive, innovative, sustainable thinkers coming together to form currencies and technologies that could not only benefit the whole entire ecosystem of users, but also the planet. So, you know, that's my favorite part is you're just around the most futuristic people out there. So our sixth question is, how was our first travel experience together? It was amazing. We definitely made the most of it. Traveling during COVID times and restrictions is definitely a little more stressful than normal. Overall though, our experience, our travel, our everything in New Mexico was absolutely beautiful. We got to also spend a day in Arizona and you know, we just really soaked up what we could, you know, we make the best out of everything. Yeah, it was so good to get off the island. We met some new friends that are super awesome and yeah, it was just a very enlightening experience. We're thankful to be back home in Hawaii and to be here just doing what we're doing with our vlogs. And Absolutely. Yeah, might be waiting for that next trip till yeah. things calm down. Definitely, it also showed us what we have every day. And I think we both are thankful that we can open up our door and see a beautiful blue sky and see a beautiful ocean and beautiful animals like a chicken, a cat, and it's just little things, but that's who we are. We appreciate that type of world and we appreciate mother nature. So it was definitely an eye-opener experience for us. <laughs> the next one is gonna be epic though. So we'll definitely make a vlog of it all. Polly? <laughs> so question number seven is what is your date and how long have you been dating for? Okay, so April 25th, we were under the full moon and Darren asked me out on the beach and it was so, it was beautiful. Yeah, we had the whole beach to ourselves, only stars and maybe some aliens or something. <laughs> yeah, we made it back safe. But yeah, we kind of saw, I think we might have saw a spaceship that night, it was a little weird. So it's been four months since we've been officially together. I can definitely say we've already been talking for at least six months. It's been an adventure and we're definitely so blessed and so happy that we found one another and that you guys are on this adventure with us <laughs> so our last question is wait 
just kidding. Before I get into that, you guys comment below what other questions you guys want us to answer. We want you guys to get to know us and we want to tell you guys all about us. So do that right now. But our last question is, what is it actually like living in Hawaii? And Darren's gonna take that over because he was born and raised here. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of what it's like is being a lot more disconnected to cities and technology than people realize. Um, you know, when I was living in California and other places in the United States, um, you know, I was on my phone, I was at the gym, I was indoors all the time. I think in Hawaii, people don't realize you're outside all the time. It's not a place where you stay in your hotel room or you stay in your house, you know, you're literally hiking, surfing, diving, you know, hanging out at the beach. You're literally just outdoors all the time. It's a very outdoor lifestyle place. The second thing is I guess people don't realize the the drama between tourists and all the locals, you know, there's just been such a boom in tourism over the last decade with just millions and millions of people coming here every month and our beaches and our reefs and our hikes and our trails getting desecrated and destroyed and polluted um, you know and that makes the locals really unhappy and then the tourists you know they don't understand what why that's happening it's not really anyone's specific fault more so the regulation of the on the political side but you know that's just a lot of the tensions people don't understand when you know somewhere you go every day to hike or to swim and all of a sudden there's hundreds of people there leaving trash, taking photos, being super loud and obnoxious. You know, it really, it, you wanna really make sure you're going to places that are promoted, you know, on tourist yeah. websites, not going to secret spots that are pretty much where all the locals go. Living in Hawaii has taught me to be open-minded and understand cultures. It definitely has shown me that there is an entire different world out there and that you can keep exploring. And the only person that's holding yourself back is you. Learning to respect this island, especially Maui. I think Maui is one of the most magical places ever. Well, that was our Q&A. I hope you enjoyed the questions that we answered. If you guys have more, like I said, comment below. Don't forget to like, turn that little bell on so you guys get our notifications every time we post. We hope you guys are enjoying our videos. Thank you for your support from the bottom of our hearts, seriously. It's been awesome. Tune in to our next video and we will see you guys on the next one. Stay tuned. Bye.